At Retrovision, we know exactly what you want, like our lowest price guarantee. Buy now and pay later. And an extra 5% discount for RAC members. That's on top of all the latest tech from the world's best brands at Retrovision. Episode 9 of The Pavilion, The Peel Cricket Show, which is proudly brought to you this week and every other week by Retrovision, your destination for all the electrical stuff that you love. Currently on the 24 days of Christmas giveaway, 60K of prizes available. And remember, if you are an RAC member, you get extra 5% off those already crazy low prices um, we're also sponsored by ESA Sports Agency there. Make every sporting moment epic. Get your professional sports coaching, custom design apparel and team wear, um, your sports memorabilia, your pop-up marquees and your flags, your promo merchandise, and also the official suppliers of that stuff there, Everlast Sports Drink. Um, $1.88 a bottle. Dollar eighty-eight plus GST per bottle, seven fifty mil. None of this six hundred mil stuff. Rubbish delivered to your door. Boxes are twelve. Beat the heat and stay hydrated with Everlast. So clubs start filling up those fridges. If you haven't already, you're mad. Get on to Johnny Sanders there, and um, he'll sort you out. Do a deal. Um, so cricket, cricket, and more cricket. Um, test matches in town. Um, bit of a snooze fest that one. Uh, for me, I uh, went to day one and it was a bit of a snooze fest. Um, not much better today. Um, as we speak, the Poms are showing us how to play. Um, they're playing Pakistan and they are going mad. They have scored the most ridiculous score today. And as I'm recording, I can give you an up-to-date score. So um, they are currently at stumps on day one. Sorry, stumps on day one, England. Four for 506. Yep. Four for 506 off 75 overs. And in that, you've got Zach Crawley on 122, Ben Duckett on 107, Ollie Pope on 108, and Harry Brook on 100. So four, four of the top five got 100 in, in one day. Absolutely ridiculous. And um, watched Australia play a pretty poor bowling lineup, to be fair, and um, just refused to play a shot. But anyway, we'll move on from that one. Um, so questions for everyone. Is anyone going to stop the Manuel machine? We'll hear a little bit more about that. The T20s, they started in grades B to F. Fantastic. Got some great news there. Um, we're going to chat to Leezy again, Tim Lees, all the way from the Kimberley. He's going to give us his views. We're going to interview with the siblings, the Rudge siblings, brothers, Josh and Jack Rudge. We have a little bit of a chat to them, sort of hear a little bit about their background. Obviously, Josh is the captain of Hall's Head and, and he's living over here, but Jack's come over as the overseas player, or one of the overseas players. So we have a bit of a chat to them and we talk all things veterans cricket. It's been a big couple of weeks and um, Max Fazio, who plays for um, Rockham Hornets um, also has a big, big role with the, the vets and organizing a lot of them should be playing, but there's a bit of a story there anyway. Um, but we have a chat to Max to get a bit of a rundown on how that's all going and um, all that and a little bit more scores on the doors and things like that on this, your favorite show ever, the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show, proudly brought to you by Retrovision, ESA Sport and Everlast. And if you are listening to this on a Saturday morning, you probably can't see. Well, you don't need to see it on a Saturday morning. Um, but we are also on Sport FM, 91.3 Sport FM. 
um, your your station for community sport, eight o'clock to nine o'clock every Saturday morning. You get to listen to this as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in. My name's Orazio Santa Lucia. I'm your presenter, and we'll be back after this. Racing members get exclusive deals and offers, plus an extra five percent off on top of our lowest price guarantee at Retrovision. Okay, so it's that time of the week where we tune in all the way north to the Kimberley and we get the views of the PCA from the Kimberley from our man Tim Timmy Lees. How are we, mate? Good thanks, Ratty. It's good good to hear your voice again, mate. So you've been uh, you've been looking um south, I guess. That's the way you sort of be looking out the window, looking down and, and looking down on us. Down here in um you know in Peel and, and regions, um and sort of seeing that uh you know the cricket is still going on. Obviously, test match going on as we speak as well. And um, and speaking of test matches, England are going absolutely gangbusters at the moment as well, doing what Australia should have been doing. Um, but anyway, A grade cricket this week just gone, a weekend just gone. Um, you saw Pinjara take on your old boys. Singleton and uh, they got the win. They got the chocolates. What did you see in that one? Um, yeah, I was just about to say it's all about the T20, um, <laughs> and it's been magnificent watching that. And then the PPL, and then you've thrown me straight in with that one. Um, yeah, look, it was. I think again, uh, was, yeah, the boys this year struggling with the bat to put together a score enough um, to be competitive. And I think it was another story like that, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Can seven, you run through the totals again? Seven, seven for 160 singleton, but it wasn't enough. Pinjara got five for 165. And uh, the big fella, Adam France, uh, just went to town, got 97 not. Ran out of uh, score, basically. I think he would have got 100, but they uh, they passed the score. So that was that. And with yeah, the duck, I can, yeah, the big fella has a... Has I can a, still remember him, um, Ratsy. Sorry to cut you off there. I can still remember him as a under 14 uh, into the 15s at Rocky Mandra and we picked him in that 14s Emerging Warriors squad and kind of reminded me at the time and I think I remember you, you used to, um, we well, both of us used to joke around when we used to pick players and say what, who they looked like but I used to say he looked like Tom Moody the way he used to <laughs> lumber in and big um, big meds and then could smash them as well so yeah, yeah nah, it was a big label to put on him but yeah, great to see him playing some senior cricket and, and smashing them still. Yeah, well, he, I mean, he went on to play um, at Rocky Mandra, but he's uh, come back to play with his home club, Pinjara, this year and, and doing really well. And for Singleton, with the bat, funny enough, was uh, Bob Brahm with 40 not out. Yeah, look, and there was a few debutants for the Singleton and Winian, so yes. magnificent to see um, some, some players getting their first baggy black. But, yeah, look... Um, it's a bit of a rebuild season, you know, looking on from the outsider and, and yeah, look, with some still, with some great leadership from guys like, um, you know, Bryce Evans, yeah. absolute legend of the club and um, his win-loss record over the, the journey is phenomenal when you actually look at the stats. Um, it's a crazy record. Um, so for him to take over the leadership this year and, and sort of pass on to the next crop, like young know, Bryce Kipnis and, you know, young Mike yep. King and, and these kind of guys. I know Mike Douglas, a, a fellow who's come to the club as well, I think he... So, yeah, there's been quite a few new debutants for the Singleton Winnians, but, yeah, not making enough runs, mate. You've got to get runs on the board, don't you? That's true. Very, very true. Um, next game was a very similar affair, and that one team just didn't make anywhere near enough runs, and we'll ch- chat a bit more about them later on in the uh, the T20. Unfortunately, Secret Harbour had a weekend they'd rather forget. They were... Uh, Rock and roll for 47. Maroon got that four down, and that's that game. I don't think we need to say any more about that one. It was just a, a bad bad uh, day at work, I reckon, that one. so Yeah, it's not, it's not the first one, be the last in the PCA. I've had plenty of matches uh, being sub 100. But, yeah, it's unusual when you get one that low, don't, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is, but um, yeah, you just you just move on. I mean, that's gone. It's history. There's not much you can really do there. Uh, next game, yeah. we'll go into um, White Knights Bell Divers. They got nine for one eight seven. They defeated Shoalwater one five eight. And in that um, one eight seven, uh, the Zimbabwean um, import or Zimbabwean overseas player, he's, he's actually come here to go to university. So, to be fair, but uh, Gareth Chiruwu, who um, classy looking play, now he's just starting to hit his straps. He's just got some teasing scores along the way, and he's got a, a solid eighty three. And David Melia got fifty one, retired, which is a strange one. I'm presuming he had to leave. 
Um, Jackson Ward got four for 24 for Shoalwater, and in reply, 158, just not enough. Uh, skipper Chris D'Alessandro, probably the um, – I've never heard anyone get as sledged as much by his own teammates as Chris does at Shoalwater. But, uh, yep, that's what they are. <laughs> oh, but come on, mate. They are the leaders for the best chat in the comp, surely. They're, um, they're, they're, the Shoalwater boys, they're led, led by the El Presidente, Danny, Danny Best, mate. He's one of the best at it. Pardon the pun. But, um, um, yep, yep. Yeah, no, nah, they always love a chat. That's why I love playing against them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but White Knight's doing uh, quite well. They're, um, they're sitting pretty on the table. And um, the last game, this one's got a bit of a, uh, a romantic sort of side to it two ways. A, first of all, Hall's, uh, Hall's head, they bowled Mandra out for 131 and chased it down, one down. And uh, guess who got the top score? Yeah, it's our man, isn't it, from last week. I had to eat a bit of humble pie with uh, my comments about him being an import. But, yeah, Mr. Manuel. Should we – yeah, it's almost like um, Faulty Towers, mate. But, yeah, Jack <laughs> Daniel. Some more runs, mate. He's in, what's his average now at the season? So he's batted eight – Come on, mate, get his stats eight time, Batted eight times, 526 runs at an average of 105.2, oh. and that's with one century and four half centuries. So he's uh, – Jeez, he's um, that's, headed for a big – That's about three of your seasons. The the year, isn't, he? isn't it? <laughs> oh, stop it. Come on, mate. I bat <laughs> eight normally and bowl a few dibbly dobblers. So <laughs> I'd be happy with uh, 150 to 200 runs. That's a big year for me. You're right. <laughs> but, yeah, to score that – uh, before Chrissy, that's yeah. I mean, you've just got to um, knuckle down and try and convert it from there. Because if, if you don't get eight nine hundred from there, you, you kind of feel like you've almost not converted. Yeah. I know, which sounds ridiculous because you'd probably take six seven hundred, wouldn't you? <laughs> but um, I'm sure the the Hall's head boys would be hoping that he keeps keeps on his merry way and um, and I'm sure Jack he wouldn't mind a few of the other boys chipping in as well. Well, they they're just. Um they're just steamrolling everyone at the moment. They're 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 um they're unstoppable. I mean, uh, Mandra, um, who probably promised a little bit more uh, pre season, they haven't quite hit their straps just yet. But um, you know, we're still early doors, and we can still in a couple of wins, and all of a sudden things change. But 131 yeah. bowled out four. They're 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 a better batting team than that. Um, skipper Jordan Bell, you know, leading the way again with 34, and. Uh, a young nipper called Brendan Diamonte got thirty two not out, and uh, I thought that was a bit of a bit of a highlight. In that he um he he played he played a grade for Mandra, and um his his boy Isaac who's who's doing really well this year, fourteen year old made his a grade debut. So dad's trying to play with his with his son, and I think it's quite a special story there. But uh, it's nice to get the uh, the New Zealand international back into the game. How good. Um, yeah, I mean, young, young Isaac's just uh, going on in leaps and bounds. Like I said, 14 years of age, making his A-grade debut um, and, and, you know, holding his own. So it's it's really, really good to see. Um, so the latter at the moment, uh, well, as you can imagine, Hall's head on 48, flying high. White Knights second on 30. Um, Warmbra, they had the uh, they had the weekend off. So Kane, Kane got to wash his hair and, and stuff like that, you know, make it look nice and pretty. Oh, we're, we're gonna, maybe we're gonna... plait the rat. Do you mean plait the rat style and maybe get it looking the good? <laughs> um, Shellwater, uh, where are they? One, two, fourth, 27. Waruna, uh, 24. Pinjara, 18. Mandra, 16. Singo, 14. And Secret Harbour at the bottom on 10. Um, if we quickly move on to the uh, T uh, Retrovision Premier T20 competition, um, unfortunately, wasn't that much of a game. Um, Secret Harbour versus Singleton. So for you, you'd be happy with this result. But Secret Harbour batted first, uh, seventy-one all out. Just uh, just a few uh, shot selection. We'll just say there was some. You know, some guys started to get in, but they just couldn't convert. And and you know, a, a ten here and a and an eight there, and a, it's just not enough. And before you knew it, they were. They were all out. They lost four or five for not very many towards the back end, and um, they were spun out. Bob Bob Brown with his left arm wrist spin, um, bamboozled him. He got four for fourteen and um, just ran through the um, the middle to lower order. And how uh, good? Yeah, well, yeah. What well, I think um, Cole Jeffrey opened the batting for Secret Harbour, didn't he? Yeah, and he unfortunately I saw, I saw him in the batting gun. 
Well, I was going to, God bless you, Kyle. I'm a big fan of you, mate. And I used to play with Kyle at Hall's Head many years ago. So I got a love, a lot of love for the man. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him open the batting. So when I saw him opening up, I did think that they might be a bit thin on the batting card. <laughs> no offence, <laughs> young Kyle. It bowls absolute thunderbolts. And I'm sure he um, fired a few out that night. But, yeah, look, they'll lick their wounds, won't they, Secret Arbor, after last week? But, you know, it, can, it only takes one week to turn it around. So I'm sure they'll be desperate to atone for that performance yeah. um, in the T20s and the 50 overs and and get get back out there again. Um, yeah, and, and you just got to do it, don't you? You can't yeah. dwell on it too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually think um, just, just go back on a, on a story. And look, every everyone's gone through this. If you play cricket long enough, you have periods where it just doesn't work and, and a club I used to play for back uh, in Victoria that we, we just went from chocolates to bald lollies within the season and we just couldn't couldn't spell cricket anymore um, the coach coaching staff decided that um, right we're gonna we're gonna do running and everyone's like oh Christ and it was a running track we used to go to except what what we didn't know was that what they did was they made us start a run and we got about a hundred meters round and then we saw that there was a one of those public barbecues going and three or four eskies full of, you know, full of beer. And um, that was training that night. And it was just, look, just, you know, forget about it. Just have a few beers, have a bit of fun. Because no, nothing else was I working. Love him. Nothing else was working. I love him. And yeah. um, that weekend, four from four, all, all the teams won. I'm, I'm actually pretty sure on Origin Camp, uh, the Maroons, I, I sort of read that they have a, have a night where they get the eskies out and the boys all have a bit of a beer yep. and carry on. And they sort of, yeah, plan for that in their camp. I they, mean, they plan to beat you camaraderie. Your, they plan to beat you well, in New South Wales Blues, mate, don't they? Yeah, when I read that, I'm like, surely we just need a lock in for the Blues camp. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Like camaraderie within the group, um, it, it sort of it yeah. equals a lot on the weekend and and can sort of mean your top order has that chemistry. And um, and that's the other thing. If, if you have got a top order like Secret Harbour, I, I, I have no idea. So I didn't recognise a lot of the names, to be honest. Yeah. But if you haven't played a lot together and batted together and built that synergy, you know, that takes time. And, yeah, you know, you've got to learn from the lessons. Um, but interesting with Singleton and Winnings, maybe of note, to um, mention Dane Eagle getting his debut, black, black Cup, which is um, a bit of a coup. Yeah. For the uh, the T Twenty competition, so fantastic to see him yep. represent Singleton Williams and Bobby Brown in the wickets, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah, like you've little, mentioned already, little left arm yeah, wrist so. spinners, and uh, yeah, Singleton. I call them one hundred and eighties. Yeah, well, well, like like most wrist spinners, he's, he's sort of uh, speculative with his first one or two balls. You sort of hope that they land, and when they do, um, he's hard to put away. He's he's quite accurate, turns them. Good flight, and um, there's not many left arm wrist spinners. Yeah, nice. you, don't, you don't face many. Um, I've so. seen him bowl. Um, I've seen him bowl the other way as well. So he bowls a bit of, um, yeah, bit of wrist and a bit of finger as well. So and yeah, both of them he does with deadly accuracy, like you said. Does. That's what you need in the T twenty yeah. side. If you're a skipper, you love that type of bowler, don't you? Hundred percent, and and it's spin to win in uh, in peel cricket at the moment. All the spinners doing quite well. So keep going. Part of the uh, the union, keep going, all, all good stuff, and uh, none for seventy two. Singleton did in nine overs. Uh, Chris Tomay Tor- got thirty three not out. Um, had enough chances. He, he probably got dropped about six times. It was just one of those days for for Secret Harbour, unfortunately. And uh, old, old Birdie got thirty two not out. He was in a bit of a hurry. Um, just just you know hit the ball. Couple hard. of sixes, mate. Yeah. Hit a couple does. of sixes. As he does. Well he was four fours and two sixes. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, Chris Tormay, uh ex Secret Harbour player, mate. So he'd be uh he'd be loving getting those runs against his old side. But yeah, if he got dropped six times, I'm sure there would have been a few laughs around the um sidelines because quite a few of the ex Secret Harbour boys that have made made the journey across quite a few years ago now. So they're well and truly Singleton and Winians, but I'm sure they've still got a, f- a few competitive <laughs> ties, like like I do, mate. Whenever yep. I play against Hall's Head, <laughs> and with um with that game as well, just uh, Chris, just an interesting fact here with Chris Tormay, he's playing his cricket at Rockingham Andrew at the moment. Um, he's a guest player for um Singleton in in the uh, T20 competition. He's got two 
big hundreds in in the fourth eleven for Rockingham. Andrew can't can't get up to the three, so I don't know. They, they must have the super threes at um Rockingham because <laughs> he has got two big, what, big hundreds and yeah. can't, can't move up. So I don't know what's going on there. My my season of Rocky fours is still the most memorable of probably my cricketing career, man. I loved it so much. Uh, that club is something special, Rocky Mandra. Just the, the song that you sing when you get into the rooms with the boys, you know, the Mighty Mariner men, um, I'm sure he's I think got they've addicted changed, to that. I think they've um, changed the words a little bit. They would have, clearly would have had to have, mate. But, um, <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's a great club, and it, it's great for him to go down and have a crack. Because I tell you what, mate, the way he hits the ball, when he does connect, he hits him real hard. So, um, yeah, exciting for uh, the Wacker uh, competition in the lower grades for him to be sort of pushing through. But, yeah, you're right, mate. Surely you can get a, a third-grade berth with a couple of times. Yeah. Maybe he's just happy sitting in first slipping fours and, um, you know, getting Maybe. a uh, super, dog at, <laughs> super dog at Lark Hill tea. <laughs> mate, You've heard about the legendary super dogs down there, haven't you, mate? Uh, I haven't. I know you, you're, you're, you're um, partial to a, to a hot dog. You've, you've travelled all over um, southwest... Uh, WA. Oh yeah, no, nothing. Yeah, nothing gets close to a Lark Hill Super Dog though, mate. It's, it's something pretty special. Well, what about it's like what a about foot long the... Subway style hot dog with bacon, cheese like melted into it, and then sauces on top. So yeah, just don't eat one before going out after tea to bowl at <laughs> a twenty over spell, mate. What about your Joe's Pizza ones? Oh yeah, that's killer as well. Yeah, Joe's <laughs> Pizza. Yeah, how good are those pizzas? Are they still going around in Safety Bay? Um, I think so. I mean, I'm there's hot dogs that they do. They do those. They, you. Oh, sorry, I went off track there. I thought you were talking about the um the pizza mob that yeah. sponsored Rocky Andrew as well. Sorry, yeah, no, we got off track. But look, <laughs> yeah, um, fan, fantastic that he's down there having a crack at Rocky Andrew Crystal, mate. Eh? Um, but yeah, you get need a bit of luck sometimes, and G six six yeah catches, it was, mate. He he, uh, he went and bought a lottery ticket, I think, as well. But we'll, um, we'll... You wouldn't bother, would you? You, sure <laughs> you use them all. Uh, we'll move on. Just a couple... At Retrovision, we know exactly what you want. Like our lowest price guarantee. Buy now and pay later. And an extra 5% discount for RAC members. That's on top of all the latest tech from the world's best brands at Retrovision. Okay, welcome everyone. Another little interview here for the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Show. Proudly brought to you by Retrovision, ESA Sports and... Everlast Sports Drinks. Now, sitting here just before the uh, T20 game um, of the Retrovision Premier T20 League, Mandra versus uh, Warmbra tonight. Um, played at Hallshead, obviously, and I thought it'd be a good idea to interview um, the Rudge brothers here. So we've got Josh Rudge, who is captain of Hallshead and been here for a few years, and the, uh, the, the Clark Kent looking one next to him is his younger brother, James, who's out here for a season playing for Hall's Head as well. So welcome to the show, guys. Oh, thank you. Thanks, we only got one mic. Yeah, yeah we only got the one mic. Right yeah, okay, it's, it's what happens when you've got three. Um, okay, so uh, Josh, you've been here for a few years now. Um, what, what sort of enticed you to come out here? Obviously, you, you probably would have said, I want to go and play in Australia. And, um, you know, Hall's Head, how, how did you get here? Yeah, so this is my um, soft, obviously my fourth year here. Um, what drew me out here? I, look, we always had overseas players back home. Um, we had a couple from um, New Zealand, Australia, uh, South African, Zimbabwean, um, and a lot of the lifeblood around the club was always brought by who the overseas was. Um, and I always thought, you know, I'll get my degree out of the way with, and then before I settle down, I'll go and do six months in Australia. <laughs> Um, throw that in the pot with the pandemic, which, which meant you couldn't travel anywhere. I've got some absolutely great people around me at the club here that work in, in the right places that can expose you to, to work and, and um, friendships and lifestyles that, quite frankly, you can't really say no to. So um, what was originally going to be six months before I went back and did my grad scheme has now turned into what would be the foreseeable. I'm definitely looking to settle down here with, with permanent residency next year, hopefully. Fantastic. Fantastic to hear. Um, and, and, you know, Hall's Head, Mandra, it's not, not the worst place in the world. Um, you know, you've got lovely beaches. Um, the weather does get a bit better. Well, you know, you probably got to tell your brother that, but it does get a little bit better. And um, the lifestyle's quite quite laid back, really, I would have thought. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I forgot to mention the reason why I came over to Hall's Head in particular. Um, I used to play uh, junior cricket with a lad who captained that sea grade, Alec. Um, and he at the time was living with, with Jack, who I'm sure you're familiar with now across the association. Um, 
great cricket, even better guy. Um, and yeah, he, he said he'd put me up for six months. So I just said, if that's a place for, for six months, <laughs> and then kind of got moved out and moved in with uh, with the brother here at Callum James. Okay, well, and, and then well, here you are, four years later, which is which is fantastic for um not only Hall's Head but also the Peel Cricket Association. Um, we'll get the other guy involved now. So, um, James, well, first of all, first of all, what where what club did you guys? I mean, you're probably playing at different clubs if you were home, Josh and James. But where did it all start? What club was it? So we both we both uh, played at different clubs now. Um, but then before we came out, we were both at Tamworth. Oh. I was there. I moved there when I was about eleven. And then Josh came about two or three years after, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, we just uh, we, were, we were playing there, both played first team cricket together, which was really nice. And then obviously Josh moved out here, I moved away to a different club, and kind of forgot what it was like to play with my brother. And it was quite nice to come over and have that opportunity to do it again. Um, so yeah, that was that was a big part of me coming here. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fantastic. And you're playing um, a bit of minor county cricket, weren't you, in England? Yeah, so I played for Herefordshire. Um, which has been really good. It's been it's been uh, it's been really nice because we've been able to play first class counties as well. So it's not just playing against your um, your like your other minor counties. You get a showcase game each year, and it's nice to give yourself a go against some really really good players. Mm-hmm. Obviously, get paid to play. Really put yourself against the best of the best, and you get opportunities to perform well against them. Okay, so enough of the uh, the serious questions. Now, the the sort of stuff that everyone wants to know is okay. So um, you would have grown up playing against, well, sort of not against each other, but in the backyard or, or would have been probably down the cricket nets or down the cricket club. Um, so, you know, Josh being the older brother, did you just bash him around everywhere or, or you know, as he built up his pace, did he start to get you out? Yeah, no, I just picked him up. Yeah, look, he's two and a half years older than James, so, you know, he's a kid that has quite a big difference. So, yeah, I was able to. Um, a certain one for a few younger <laughs> ages. Um, I think I then went off and uh, discovered university and everything that comes with that and changed up to his cricket and probably reaping the rewards of, of that in terms of ability levels now. But um, yeah, no, we, we didn't play him. <laughs> and was it always, you know, yourself as a top order batter and, and James as a bowler? Because, I mean, we all go through stages as cricketers, you know, you're probably a wicket keeper at one stage, you probably bowled spin and then, you know, everyone tries everything. Yeah, no, I kept for a couple of years. Um, <laughs> no, I always batted. I did the batting game with the bowling. Um, yeah, it's a good partnership, hopefully. <laughs> okay, and James, now you've got to remember, there must be one time where, you know, you were the younger brother coming up and there must have been a point where you thought, hey, actually, I can I can compete with this bloke now. Um, what, what age was that and where did you sort of start getting him out in the nets and stuff like that? Well, like I said, I uh, I moved to Tamworth when I was about 11. Um, so I didn't get to do too much bowling and batting against <laughs> Josh um, for, those, for those next two years. And then when he came over, it was just being all over him after that point when he came to Tamworth. No, he's, you know, he's always obviously been a very good player and he actually took his first five for before I took mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I was absolutely gutted to come home and see him with the bat- match ball. Um, but no, it's been it's been it's been good. It's always been a decent battle. Even now, bowling at him in the nets, it's always get a little bit bowl a little faster, and he hits it a little bit harder. <laughs> and have the uh, the rest of the uh, Horsehead team may sort of notice that a little bit of sibling rivalry in the nets that they sort of egg that on. Um, I'll let Josh speak about this one because an event happened a couple of weeks ago when we were having a net. <laughs> I'll let him let him speak about that. I'm not familiar, but yeah, they egg it on. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, I, yeah, I chopped on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, my first oh, well, there you go. So that's yeah. it. It's just like, oh, well, I got him out. and that's. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, J- James, you so see, you've just come out here and um, you probably would have heard and, and probably watched a little bit um, either online or, or whatever, or watching Josh play and, and the cricket out here. Now, obviously, we haven't really got going yet this season because we've played a game, rained off, played a game, rained off, all that sort of stuff. What are your first impressions of the club and, and you know and your surrounds? Yeah, well, I can't can't fault the club. Everyone here seems to have your best interests at heart, and it's really nice. You can go to anyone, and they'll do a favour for you. Any any heartbeat. Um, but I do keep getting told, oh, I don't remember the last time it rained in November. <laughs> I don't remember the last time we didn't have a week over thirty degrees in October. And I'm here looking at the weather for Saturday, and it's eighteen degrees and cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's been it's been a really good experience so far. I've got myself a a golf membership down at Mandra. So, you know, spending my time wisely. 
um, going to hack it around a golf course and, you know, what, what else would you rather be doing before you got to go and settle back down with work when you get back home? So, yeah, you know, it's good. <laughs> and uh, your cricket aspirations, are you, um, you know, you, you're thinking you'd like to, you know, continue on the, the pathway and maybe, you know, someday get a professional contract somewhere? Yeah, so like I say, we uh, we play against the first class, uh, first class county. We play against Worcestershire uh, once a year. And both times I've played against them, I've had a decent game. Um, so it's quite nice to to see that you're not a million miles away. Mm -hmm. uh, I've played a little bit of second team cricket for Sussex this year and held my own. So hopefully we can keep on that path and, you know, you've, you could, you just keep working hard and hopefully a little bit of luck comes your way. You perform when, when there's an opportunity available, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't necessarily know when that opportunity is going to come around. I mean, I, I played with a guy uh, back home who was a, who was a bowler like myself, but he'd played about five or six games for the twos had done okay. Um, and then got his uh, debut for Sussex just out of nowhere. They just rang him up, said, do you want to play? <laughs> now, obviously you do because they were playing Middlesex <laughs> away at Lords and he went and took a six for in the first innings. Oh. And, um, you know, the rest is history and he's he's now contracted with, with Sussex. So, you know, it's mm. the, the, the gap's not as big as sometimes people think it is. So it's quite nice to to really have an opportunity and hopefully perform at the right times and get another go. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And um, so what about, um, look, the, 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 the obvious couple of weeks ago or even last week, um, you know, you're, well, you're, you're going to be Aussie soon, so you can't really talk, but you, you can sort of um, still go on about it. Uh, obviously winning the T20 World Cup um, and, and creating a bit of a dynasty really with white ball cricket, although you wouldn't know it right this second, but we'll, we'll leave that. Um, how do you, I mean, how do you feel being here and maybe missing out on what you could have been back home in regards to the celebrations and all that sort of stuff? Oh, no, it's nice. I mean, half the first team, oh, should I say A grade here, are bombs anyway. So, you know, we <laughs> we get stuck into the Aussies enough for it as it is and the rest of us suffers. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's football season now, right? See so, yeah, how it's coming home, mate. It's true. It's true. 6-2, uh, 6-2 six two, six two overnight. Um, and that's, that's taking your foot off the gas as well. Um, so you might want to win one at some stage at, in, in the Football World Cup, you would have thought. And uh, this one's probably as good a chance as any because we, we won't. And, and I think Australia, we know where we are. Uh, we're just happy to be there. But uh, you guys are there to, to win the thing. And I, I actually personally, I actually think it would be good if you did. I'd, I'd like to see it. I've got an English connection. My wife's English. I lived there for eight odd years myself. So um, I understand how big it is. And, and I, I can't imagine. Actually, you might want to go home if – just for the party, if oh, you want. the Euros last year, yeah. We're not getting a little bit off topic now, but yeah, a little bit yeah. of FOMO with the, uh, with the, with the yeah. Euros. Yeah, and then if you won the World Cup as well, geez. Oh, yeah, I'll be honest. Geez, a cr like cricket T20, <laughs> 50 over world champs, Euro. Oh, my Lord. Um, anyway, uh, it'll be unbearable. Um, okay, and finally, just before we wrap it up, um, I, I, I'm maybe I'm biased or something, but I just think what we do here on a Tuesday – it's actually pretty special. What are you, what are your thoughts on it? As as well, you both played in it, James. You played in it for the first time this year, but Josh, you know, you're a bit of a veteran in it now. Yeah, so it's really nice. I mean, uh, obviously, we get to have, get to play with three guys from the uh, grade cricket, the Premier cricket over in the city. Um, so that's nice to nice to really get a good glimpse as to what that standard's like, because um, they're obviously playing against some of the WA players on mm -hmm. the week at the week. So. So yeah, it's good to good to really pick the brains of the, some of the players players from that. So it's really nice. Um, we've obviously had a good start, two wins from two, two pretty convincing wins. So hopefully get the, get a nice couple more wins before the end. Or we've got one more game left before the one more stage. one yeah yep. a couple more in the group stage. Get those wins in and hopefully kick into finals and do well there. Yep. And and Josh, you played in it for a few years now. Is is this? I mean, the players get up for these playing on the Tuesday night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you, like James touched on it, then you get to play with players you wouldn't normally get to play with, um, whether that's with or against them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good little leveller to see where you're at, you know, uh, to see what the other guys are capable of doing and, and what the standard is that you, you know, ultimately trying to trying to get to to perform at the highest level you can. But um, yeah, facilities wise, I don't think you can get much better in, in country cricket, um, floodlight tournament. Um, the decks hold up pretty good this this year, I think. Um, time will tell as the games that have played on it over, over the season. But um, yeah, they, they, they do a good job. I think the coverage that you, that you put on yourself, Arazia, you know, it's it's great to have that energy around the 
around the game um, and, you know, I can speak from our club. Uh, we come down and we watch it. Um, it's interesting to, to watch it. You know, if you can't watch it in person, you watch it remotely and you can yeah, have a great glimpse on what the, the other sides are capable of and where the comp's going. Mm, yeah, well, I'm glad that that's coming from players as well because I, I, I actually I get excited myself, but I just think it's just a fantastic opportunity for you know, our little cricket competition down here um, to play under lights and really good facilities. And more often than not, it's pretty good cricket too. Um, like you said, we get guest players and um, it works quite well. Okay, and finally, um, you must have something on him and you must have something on, on him. What is it? One thing. Gosh, this wasn't in the uh, agenda. Um what do I have on Jay? Oh, not much of a footballer. We spoke about football before. Um, <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit of football over the years. Um, probably achieved more in that sport than I ever have and ever will in cricket, to be honest. But, big um, big centre back? No. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Centre off. Sure. Um, but yeah, no. We used to play footy down the down, or soccer or whatever you want to call it down down the park, and um, yeah, James would do the most ridiculous things. Um, you know. Toe poking on him from the from the corner flag to curl one in and claim he had an idea about it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I've got. The only bit of dirt that I'm I'm willing to, to share on James. Um, <laughs> he's like, he's like that's a, clean. Like a football ability. That's clean. Okay, James, and what what have you got? What have you got in the big bro? No, I think it says a lot because there's not really a lot of dirt you can have on him. He's a bit boring to be honest. With you. <laughs> uh, that's probably the only thing I could go with. I'm here trying to wrap my brains to try and think of something funny, but um, no, he's he's a good kid. Got his head switched on, so. Bit, bit boring at times, but <laughs> no, it's all right. Deary me, deary me. Okay, well, look, guys, um, I've, I've taken enough of your time. Uh, thanks for being on the show, and um, we look forward to seeing how you guys progress this season. Hall said, obviously, started like a house on fire this season, but we're only early, early stages, and we know there's a lot of cricket yet to go. So thanks for being on the show, guys. Cheers, thank you. Okay, and that was the Rudge Brothers here at Hall's Head Cricket Club at Peelwood Reserve. Uh, you are on the pavilion, the Peel cricket show proudly brought to you by retrovision esa sports and everlast sports drinks we'll be back after this okay everyone welcome back we are on the pavilion the peel cricket channel proudly brought to you by retrovision everlast sports drinks as you can see we've got this live this is being recorded um live at max fazio's little den this guy here is max fazio and he's our special guest for this week's show. Welcome to the show, Max. Thanks very much, Big O. How are you, son? <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. All the better for being here with you, my friend. Um, so what we're gonna talk about, had a little brief chat in the last show about um, the WA Veterans Cricket and all the teams that are going all over the place. There's only one guy in this whole state that knows exactly what's happening, how many Peel players are going and everything that's gone into it, and that's this guy here. So Max, um, as you can see, just in case he forgets his name, he's that's, actually got it on his shirt there. That's X A M Max. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Max, what's some? Um, you know, there's teams that are gone already, all that yep. sort of stuff. What, what is going on? There, there, okay. is, there are teams everywhere. What's okay? What's going uh, on? After two year, after a two year hiatus, um, plagued by COVID, um, WA Veterans Cricket um, have sent uh, teams in the over seventies to Launceston, which their carnival has just completed. Uh, the over seventies men, that is. Um, unfortunately, that was rain um, plague. So, in they only got a couple of guys. rain in Tasmania. Rain in Tasmania. Go thought? figure. Who would have thunk it? And uh, and so yeah, um, the results there weren't quite as great as we'd expected. <laughs> but um, congratulations to Queensland who pantsed us in the, in the over seventies men. But yeah, so they got two games out of the four. Um, at the moment, uh, the over fifties men uh, carnival has started today in Adelaide, and uh, in the over fifties men. Carnival in the Peel. We have Gary Edwards from um, uh, Secret Harbour who's playing in Division 3. Um, and he's the only Peel player in the over 50s, uh, aside from myself, that would have been um, playing. Okay. Uh, Gary's doing well. He uh, has reinvented himself as a, as a wicketkeeper batsman for uh, Secret Harbour, but uh, he's now uh, watch yourself, big O, and learned how to bowl a bit of leg spin and things <laughs> like that. So, and, he's, and he's doing well. So. Um, it's good for the over fifties. They started their carnival today. Three of the three of the six sides that we sent in the over fifties men's uh, were washed out, but three got away. We got a got a win in Division Three, a comfortable win in Division Three, um, bowling them out for one hundred and seventy eight. Uh, and uh, sorry, uh, yeah, one hundred and seventy eight, and we we made the runs quite easily then. Um, uh, so so the men's carnival in Adelaide started today and will finish in five days' time. Okay, for the format is uh, four games, uh, 45 overs ODI. 
Um, this week, we have the men's over 60s leaving on Friday and Saturday <laughs> to, to play in Geelong. And the new format, uh, the women's WAVC over 40s women's also are leaving on Friday and Saturday uh, to start their, their tournament in Geelong as They're well. In Geelong, with the men. Oh, okay. Um, over 40s. And from the over 40s women, we have Blair Walsh, who, uh, who's a well respected um, cricketer uh, at Hillman Cricket Club or Rockingham Hornets now. And uh, she's played, been playing with the men for quite some years now. Mm -hmm. So um, she'll be leading the front there for us. And uh, awesome. most of the boys in uh, NEs and F grade uh, have experienced the wrath of Blair Walsh <laughs> and, uh, and her, uh, her sensational shot array of two shots, <laughs> which Blair wouldn't mind me saying. And when she hits them, they stay hit. So That's good. she uh, recently, Blair, um, I think in F grade a couple of weeks ago, belled with 30-odd 30 off, 30 off about 20 balls. So... Uh, a um, few fours and hit a six, has hit a six as well. So yeah. so she holds her own oh, well, and, and we look forward to, to, yeah. um, to monitoring her. Um, did she play in Country Week last year? Um, yes, she did. She did, okay. Yeah, and yeah. obviously uh, we're, we also have a new advent in the 40s men as well and uh, and her partner or lesser half, Steve Ersig from Hillman, <laughs> we all know big hitter. He's, uh, he's in Division 1 for the men's that start uh, on Sunday mm -hmm. in Sydney. And, uh, and we've got Andy Peckover also from um, Singleton. Singleton, who's the vice captain of the, of the Australian side and yeah. uh, West Australian side. Yeah. And uh, those two boys, uh, given the draw that we've got, I would expect to push with a few of the other guys uh, to make the Australian side. So, mm -hmm. Well, Steve's yeah. in good form, as we know. He's already got a century and a half century to his name this season. And uh, Peck's got some range. He's got a 50 at least. And bowling quite well. Oh, and yeah, he's, he's a good cricketer, former WA Country 11 member. I was team manager and assistant coach of the team that he was in. Um, he's a, he's a ripper, ripper of a guy, and everyone in the PCA obviously knows, well, would know those two in particular. Over 60s, there's a, there's a guy we might know playing in there as well, isn't it? Uh, over, in the over 60s, we've got... Well, over 50s and 60s, isn't well, it? Well, well, the 50s, 50 star day, the, real, the only representative from the Peel um, region we've got at the moment is... is um, Gary Edwards. In the 40s, we've also got Colin Venn yeah. who, um, from Secret Harbour who's gone over with Pecky. Yeah. Um, he'll play in Division 2. Yeah. Isn't Colin? Pete, Pete playing as well? Oh, Pete, Pete Ritchie, of course. Theory me. Pete Ritchie's in the 50s. My old mate Pete, the Pistol Pete, El Pistolo. I was, was going to say, mate, I'll tell you what, he's going well, to listen to this. And well, he's well, going to absolutely, a, he's going to take your head off. Well, this is the problem with Pete. He's in no man's land. Pete has just <laughs> turned 60 this year. So we all know that Pete Ritchie has played more games for Peel Peel Association than Methuselah, <laughs> um, but Pete's over there today with the over 50s, um, and he's also, because he's turned 60, he's playing 60, so his carnival will finish up around about Thursday, he'll get on a plane, go to Geelong, and he's in Division 1 for the 60s, so um, in his first year for the over 60s, yep. um, Pistol Pete, so um, good on him, um, we all know what Pete Ritchie can do, and I uh, wish, wish my good mate all the best. And he's just going to come straight back into the lovely T20 comp. He'll be fire. He'll be like the, the most informed Peel cricketer going around. And he just hit a 50 on the last weekend, I think it was. Uh, yes, and I haven't stopped hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, Pete, you know, just likes to trundle in and, you know, but uh, it's good if we can run him out, you know. <laughs> we all love running out Pete oh, Ritchie, no. as I've done for um, oh, no. the Peel over 45 side. Um, <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Um, so just on a slightly more serious note, we've obviously got the um, over 45s that will be starting soon, and, and Buff, Buff, Jason Buff Sandiford's uh, the one organising that. The Focus Cup. The yep. Focus Cup. That, um, so I played in it last year, had, a, had an absolute ball. I think it's a fantastic concept, and it'll be one that'll grow and grow. Um, I've already had a, an inquiry during the week, so I've put the call out. If anyone does, you know, you're over 45 and you haven't heard of it or whatever, or you want to play cricket on a... You know, every other Sunday or whatever it works out. Two first games on the fourth, and there's a few 4th other games. Fourth of December. Yep. The beauty, the beauty about the Focus Cup is for for the old bodies, the over forty fives men. Uh, it doesn't preclude any women that want to uh, put their hand up as well. But the beauty about playing over forty fives on a Sunday after you've played your cricket game on a Saturday is that we play on turf. All our games are played on turf at some of the Halcyon grounds mm. in district cricket. We we have the privilege of playing at places like Lark Hill, uh, Lilac Hill. Uh, Monash, Fletcher Park, these are all great district district yeah. club grounds. And the beauty about playing on turf with an old body, an old body, it, it's more forgiving 
And the format is sensational, mm. as you know, O. Um, you, we, it's a 32-over game that generally starts around 12. We're finished by 4. We're at the bar by 4.03. We're a very meticulously <laughs> run, run side. Eight overs each end. The, and, and it's high-quality cricket. And yeah. the beauty about the Focus Cup is is that 85% of the players from around the state, there's 11 sides in the competition this year, so it's grown by three sides this year. Mm -hmm. uh, 85% of the players play for the WAVC, so we all know each other. We're, um, yep. um, we're, we're a organisation that's growing exponentially against the trend in, in cricket. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the beauty about it is we all go out there to have fun. We're inclusive, non-racist, we have the, the the cultural um, aspect of of over forty five cricket is sensational. We all go back and have a drink and, and socialise yep. at the end of the day, and and I cannot emphasise what a pivotal axiom that is on mental health for, mm. for players that you know uh, of our age and yep. you know you've got guys at the lower uh, spectrum at forty five, and then you've got myself in the sixties, and and there's a couple of blokes there that are older than me, believe it or not. Uh, still playing around, and um, it is a great forum, as you know. So. Well, if we're sending teams of, like over 70s, over 60s, over 50s, now over 40s, um, we've got um, female over 40s starting, and then that'll continue to grow as the numbers grow. Um, it, it just highlights that the game is able to cater for everybody, no matter what level. Um, the, the, the beauty of the 8,000 formats that we've got in cricket, I mean, it's yes. probably a curse, but one of the beauties in, in community cricket is that there's a level for you. So whether it's over 45s, whether it's premier cricket, A grade, whether it's A grade uh, peel cricket, whether it's F grade peel cricket, wherever in the spectrum you want to play, you've got an ability to play. And then we've also got, um, uh, you know, we're, we're becoming more and more diverse. So if you're um, not able-bodied. There's 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 a type of cricket. There's there's you know there's deaf cricket. There's yes, blind man. cricket. There, there's all sorts of cricket that's available. Um, and as Max hit on, and I think it's a quite important fact is 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 the mental health aspect, the being part of a team, being part of something, being out with other people of your age or your skill set or whatever it is. Um, you're just out there with other people, and I think it's it's a fantastic uh, point that you made there. And it's um it's one that probably we need to continue to grow with because it's a game cricket that, that well the numbers aren't really growing at I guess the traditional sort of ends but the, the growth right. areas we are getting older as a as a um, as a community and veterans cricket is is starting to really boom I mean it, it, you can say it's booming it's not just a, a byline that's so right. you were saying uh, as, as the we, numbers as, just to, as, 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 just to explain that. Two years ago, Veterans Cricket in Western Australia under the WAVC banner, which is West Australian Veterans Cricket, had 63 registered members two years ago when I first joined mm -hmm. Veterans Cricket. We're now up to 311. And that exponentially, you know, to multiply by five against the trend when cricket as a broad-based a broad -based spectrum is, is dropping in numbers mm -hmm. to other sports and, and for whatever reasons, it, it shows the sign. And I think... It, it's very important for for adults who who have um, who are living vicariously through their children and playing sport. Let's let's face it. The reality is, the, the ultimate is you know Troy Lovegrove playing cricket with his son at Hillman, you know, yeah. and and the Bush Jones and all, all these guys, the Dave Brewer and he, and his two kids, yeah. you know, both uh, you know a son and a daughter playing yeah. in the same side F grade yeah. at. Um, um, at well, White Knights Bell Divers. Even, How great is yeah, that? Well, at Mandra, um, Brendan Diamante, he's playing, Brendan, he's yeah. come back out of retirement, international cricketer, yeah. to play with his boy. His boy's yeah. playing B-grade cricket there at Mandra. And um, and there is no greater feeling for a parent, I would imagine, and um, and that is sensational. But when those kids then start becoming 18 and 19 and playing elite-grade cricket themselves, where does it leave the parent? Hmm. The parent sits there and goes, well, what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit there and watch our kids? Of course you are, but... They need something, and you know, having yeah. lived uh, lived vicariously through their child, this WABC provides a forum that's inclusive. It's highly competitive. The grade of cricket is surprisingly mm. good, as you know. It last is good. year, when, yeah. you, when I you know invited you down to Peel last year, you know, and you were bowling those you know, froggy leg spins of yours, but it was sensational, mm. and um, and and it's ultra competitive. And because we're playing each other, you know, there's the the nucleus is of about eighty five percent of um, players from, from Bunbury and, and the country um, 
and the metro area, it's 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 very important. Yeah. I can I cannot under uh, you know understate the importance of playing cricket like that. It gives us a forum. I mean, you've got guys here at seventies. We've got names. I like today. I should have been in Adelaide, bro. They, the boys had organised meetings at Morfittville yesterday, and the boys have got photos with Alan Border, Buff Lehman, um, Healy, Ian Healy. I mean, these are the guys that are uh, are still playing veterans cricket yeah. in Australia. You know, they're, they're big fishes in a little pond, big fish in a little pond. But at the end of the day, these this is the type of um, interface that you get. Yeah, and and it's important. Hmm. No, very important. much so. Very but not so. only for your physical health, but your mental health. Your mental health, yeah, oh, a hundred percent. Well, your mental health is probably more important than your physical health, and it's without doubt um, a vital part of physical health, as we as we all know. Um, okay, so just to sort of recap, we've got teams everywhere, which is fantastic. We're going to keep growing this, obviously, and it's going to grow and grow and grow. Um, if you've just heard about this for the first time, thinking what I've never heard of this sort of stuff, um, you know, often. Yep, and that, and it just highlights how big this could be because if it's gone from sixty to three hundred plus, um, with word of mouth alone, really, um, the sky's the limit. And uh, I think it is going to be a big growth area. So what's this space? If you are keen to play, um, look, there's there's teams are available everywhere. Um, there's a lot of these out there in the Peel district that I play with quite often. You sit there and go, and you don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. Look, there are a few of you who have dipped your toe in the water already, but let me tell you, nothing is greater than playing than playing on turf in, in these Halcyon places with your mates and the social aspect of it. We're, we're, there, we're there to have fun. Yep. Um, and there's no animus whatsoever. There's no segregation. Um, yep. It is a great forum. Uh, so don't be apathetic. Whether you're 40 years of age or not, um, sign up and play veterans cricket. Uh, even if you don't have to play, make yourself available for every game. Once you're registered, you get an you get a, an acquired number, so a registration number. You get your hat and so forth, mm -hmm. and and you can train and play to whatever um, frequency that you want to. Yep. But next year we've got some serious carnivals happening here in Western Australia. We're holding the National 60s Carnival. The National 50s will be here. So. And, and they attract audiences of, yeah. and, and um, participation in the thousands. Yep. So there's fantastic opportunities. We play our grand finals live coverage at the WACA. Um, that's what we've organised. Mm -hmm. If not, it'll be at Lark Hill. Thank you very much, Rocky Mandra. No, no, <laughs> go to the Mariners. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I am. I was Peel. I still am. <laughs> but me and me and I were... <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we're, all, we're all good. And, and that's the beauty there. So Rocky and Mandra have come yeah. into the competition, competition this, this year. year. Um, there's a South group now, the, um, so there'll be a South group and a North division. And in the over 40s focus. Yeah, and then focus yeah, over cup. 45s. And I dare say next year it'll be next, bigger again. We've and, grown from 8 to 11 this year. Next year we'll have 14 sides in the competition. There'll be a zone conference, South and North. Yep. Uh, live live stream at the Wacker. I've been promised by James Hewitt. So if you're watching this, James, <laughs> you're on notice, brother. Yeah. You're on notice. Well, he's he's moved roles. He's now an umpire. He's working in the umpires group. But anyway, we can <laughs> we can we can work on that sort of stuff. Um, now with frog box and all that sort of stuff, we can get all that up and running as well. Look, um, this has been great. We could sit here forever, but um, we've got a, a only so much time to fit into a segment and into a show. So Max, thank you for your time. Thanks, so. Um Again, My if pleasure. anyone does want to play over forty fives and you're wondering how do I find out and all that sort of stuff, um, look, just just contact me. Uh, president at peelcricket.com or jump on the uh, Peel Cricket Association Facebook page, send a, a message through Messenger and I'll line you up with Boof. Um, I don't like calling him Boof, but anyway. Jason, uh, Jason, 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 Jason Sandiford. Sandiford. Uh, everyone knows Boof. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, we, you'll get into the chat group and then you'll work out whether, you know, uh, playing details and all that sort of stuff. Okay. You're on the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Association, uh, the Peel Cricket Show which is the Peel Cricket Association show, um, proudly brought to you by Retrovision, ESA Sport, and they distribute that stuff in the back there. Everlast Sports Drinks. Um, this one's the Berry Blaze. Oh, yeah, and Max. <laughs> I just did I was bad up for him, and this I, see, you can make a silk purse out of it. See you. See <laughs> okay, we'll be back after this. Racing Excellent. members get exclusive deals and offers, plus an extra 5% off on top of our lowest price guarantee at Retrovision. That was a great chat with Max there, talking all things bets. And we've had a great chat with uh, a few people. So we've spoken to uh, Leesy, Tim Lees, up in the Kimberley, 
um, sharing his views on, on what he's sort of seeing there. Um, still got some great insights into the PCA and he'll be back down not um, in the not too uh, distant future. And uh, we might get him live as well as commentating on the Retrovision T20s. Um, we had a chat to the Rudge brothers, which was fantastic. Got a little bit of a background on how they grew up and any sibling rivalry. Um, and as you heard, there probably wasn't that much. Um, they're too nice to each other. Um, but yeah, thanks for the chat there. And we also um, just heard some of the scores and we went through some of that sort of stuff. So it's great. What's coming up? We've got a lot more cricket coming up. Obviously, we've got uh, round nine of the um, A-grade Wiley Cup. So, some, uh, you know, it's all starting to heat up there. We've got round two of the T20 competitions between B and F grade. So, let's see some more scores and, and um, wickets and results and fun. And it was, it was really, really good. i um, so pleased with the way they've sort of gone off. Um, we've got over 45s this weekend, Peel versus Rocky Manger. If you've got nothing else on, get down to Stan Twight, 12.30 uh, start. See some some of the, uh, the the vets run around, have a bit of fun there. And some are actually coming off a plane pretty much and uh, straight off playing in various tournaments and coming in to play in that one. And next week we get to see the reigning champs of the Retrovision Premier T20 competition, Showwater. We get to see them for the first time, and they take on the might of Pinjarra. Tuesday, 6.30, tune in at the Pavilion, the Peel Cricket Channel. But that's it, and uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening in, everyone. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you for listening on Sport FM, and uh, we'll be back next week. My name's Orazio Santo Lucia, signing off for now. Bye-bye. At Retrovision, we know exactly what you want, like our lowest price guarantee. Buy now and pay later. And an extra 5% discount for RAC members. That's on top of all the latest tech from the world's best brands at Retrovision.